Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to have on the show today uh, Gareth from See the Pattern. Now, if you already know about the channel, he's got about 2,200 subs over there. You're probably a follower of the Electric Universe, as well as Gareth. And today we're going to not only meet Gareth, who's uh, over on the other side of the pond, as they say, but we're also going to learn why Gareth cares about science. Gareth, thank you for coming on the show, and I love your YouTube channel. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. So why don't we get started with you telling us why do you care about cosmology and why do you care about electric universe cosmology? Uh, so that's a long story. Um, I, I guess for me, cosmology and astronomy started when I was really young. Um, I I did physics. Uh, I remember doing physics at uh, at school, and I became very interested in it. And, and my dad used to buy me astronomy magazines, and I just used to, you know, drool over the beautiful pictures of of stars and galaxies, and you know, wondering the what ifs, the how is that, and why is that. And um, I guess in later life, I, I became uh, a physics teacher. So again, I was teaching that. And, and for me, bringing that passion to, to, to that understanding was really important. Um, and then at some point, I, you know, because I've always been interested in, in alternative ideas. Um, you know, I, I read a lot about uh, the likes of Graham Hancock understanding, you know, what happened with the pyramids and, and alternative histories. And for me, there are always fundamental problems when, you know, looking at uh, astronomy and cosmology and certainly in the way that we teach it, that didn't make sense. There were certain things that just started to connect together that made a lot more sense. Now, the problem was when I started that journey was like, you know, I watched some of those videos, I watched some of the conferences, and I was like, wow, this is just amazing. You know, there's so much stuff here. But then I started to ask, well, well why is that? And, and, and how does this happen? And, and why does that not happen? And then when you start to kind of scratch the surface and, and try and understand more, there isn't much there. And from that was kind of born this idea of, of, of building the channel to, to show a journey um, which would be my journey, you know, if I was going to find out about stuff, then why not share that understanding with other people? And from that, the, the channel was born. And, and to be honest, I, I never really started it with the understanding that people would actually watch the videos. And I guess maybe for a lot of people, that is how they start the YouTube. For me, it was like a, an outlet for me to, to force me to do the research. And it was also, it was kind of my dad, because I showed my dad and he was like, no, I don't believe any of this is a load of rubbish. And I was like, right, okay, I, I'm... Not that he watches YouTube much, but for me, it was a way to to kind of hone down on 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 doing proper research and simplifying some of those concepts in a way that was understandable. So that for me was the journey of of why cosmology and electric universe came together. Wow, that was a beautiful explanation. And uh, more importantly, uh, the human condition is leading us to these types of studies. Because if I can just reflect back on my early days in academia, I also, when I was like 10 or 12, had a subscription to the science fiction book club. I we used to read Omni magazine. I had books on astronomy and telescopes and on and on. But I was under the impression that these astronomers and these physicists had basically figured out uh, all the Newtonian mechanics and everything was basically settled like 80, 90%. You know, there was not a lot to do and maybe I could get into a uh, planetary geology or something at the small scale, but I had no idea that almost every single one of the concepts that were taught in school is absolute rubbish. Yeah. And that, that's the scary thing because obviously I, I teach some of these concepts and you know, a lot, I mean, I, you know, the whole Big Bang, you know, I was taught it at school and you, you read it in the textbooks. And, I, you know, I used to teach it as part of the curriculum. This is what the Big Bang is and here's the evidence for it. And it's not until you start scratching behind the surface. Well, you know, 
how good is that evidence that you realize that a lot of the stuff that you know we tell people is the truth is based on a very thin set of data that really could be interpreted many different ways yet we have a paradigm that that it must be this way and everyone must follow this particular way and i, I don't really understand how well I, I sort of understand partly why we've ended up in this situation but it's become more sort of closed in that the, the viewpoints of of scientists is so I apologize for Gareth freezing up a little bit. Uh, bear with us. Are you there, Gareth? You look like you're back. Are you back, sir? <laughs> I'm back. Okay, you hear let's, me? Uh, let's jump into uh, EU. Um, is that really where you started to unravel this? Did you go over and check out the Electric Universe? Were you over at Thunderbolts Project? Because I, I noticed you, your last guest, uh, Walter Cruttenden, from the Binary Research Institute. About 10 years ago when I started uh, unraveling, so I, my specialty in graduate school was Milankovitch theory. Um, Newtonian mechanics as it relates to uh, the orbital perturbations in our solar system. And I was trying to unravel that to figure out a, oh. an ice age mechanism. And it became more and more difficult as we learned more and more. It was that whole idea of mathematical model is simply to please us scientists. It does not give us any answers. It allows us to think <laughs> that we know what's happening. And that's the unfortunate thing. But so I... I really got into the yuga cycle and I thought that there was a little bit more motion and then this binary star idea and I, and it totally blew my mind because I didn't know that that type of information existed. And so you really are interviewing some of the greatest people that you could be getting on your show to talk about these topics. And um, it's just a pleasure to see someone with such a large catalog of easy to digest, very <laughs> difficult concepts. And I applaud you for that. So what, where, where do you see, see the pattern going? Uh, because clearly people are watching, they're subscribing. If you haven't, subscribe to his channel. Literally, you will get uh, a PhD education uh, after your 30th video. <laughs> um, where, where do I see it? So for me, it's very much... The problem I have on on all sides, you know, whether you look at mainstream or whether you look at the Thunderbolts, is they make many assumptions um, and they don't always explain those assumptions. And f for me, the answer to a lot of problems doesn't lie in one particular solution. It lies yeah. in, in what I call the grey, the in-between area where you take a little bit of this and you take a little bit of that and together you find a new path. It may not be the perfect fit, but that leads you on to another direction, which leads you somewhere else. And that's why I started with some of the, the, the sort of what I call the pioneers and some of this, the Alvins and the, and the Arps, because, you know, often Thunderbolts would refer to their work, but I was like, well, well what did they do and how did they uncover it? And, and understanding how they went about it and some of their ideas. And let's be honest, if you look at Alvin's ideas, some of them, uh, not close off your eyes to the fact that actually the answer may involve many different things from many disciplines, whether it's mainstream, electric universe, plasma universe, or some other thing. And what I see is my channel being that journey of uncovering and presenting different ideas and concepts, and you may buy into them, you may not but what i try and do is is thread a needle through those stories so generally i have like on mondays it tends to be sort of uh, an informational piece so it is some concept that i'm trying to explain and then the friday ones tend to be something that's come up in the news that that sparks an interest to me that i can use to sort of describe how some of these concepts might come together or to outline some of the problems, you know, where one side, side says this and the other side says that. But in reality, if you look at both those stories, the truth is that neither of them work particularly well. 
And and I think it's that uh, openness to to be prepared to say it doesn't work. But honestly, I don't have the answers. But here are some ideas, and here are some other ideas. And and generally, what what happens is people will comment and and give other ideas of Have you looked at this? And and that leads into into a new direction. So it's almost like a a community that's building up that of like-minded people who are open to all sorts of different concepts. Yeah, you need to be open-minded and you need to check your sources. The reason we get into these situations is no one checks their work. No, uh, they listen to the um, reporter, so to speak, or the scientist, and they just uh, follow along with what they're saying. And, and, it, and then what you have is this effect of, layered bullshit upon bullshit, which uh, it doesn't even scientifically work together. And what I mean by this is I saw the brilliant presentation at EU 2015. Uh, I was in the front row. Stephen Crothers was talking about uh, some very advanced math and how almost all of the scientific community goes along with Big Bang hypothesis, right? And yet we talk about black holes and we talk about dark energy. These are concepts that mathematically do not go together. So in Big Bang cosmology, let's say you can't have a black hole. You need infinite universe to have a black hole as the starting condition. But no one has told this in the beginning. They think that you can have a black hole in a Big Bang universe, but mathematically you can't. They think you can have dark energy in this type of universe, but you can't. So we explain things that we don't know what they are, and then people believe it. So you have millions of people with intrinsic beliefs based on fairy tales. And the biggest fairy tale is this gravity wave. It angers me to no end. We've already <sighs> know that some of the gravity waves detected are actually wasps and tubes nearby. And it goes even further than that. You cannot prove a concept that you don't even know what the concept is. And, and that's why I think we need more channels like See the Pattern. We need more eyes on it. We need more multidisciplinary scientists um, to cross-reference the ideas and the science and to check each other and say, look, you may be going down the wrong path. And I really enjoyed your analysis of the Sapphire Project because I, I literally believe that this is some of the most cutting-edge scientists uh, physical experiments happening today on the earth. And we are going to learn many amazing things about that. And in your analysis, you kind of called them on it. Your exact explanation of why your channel exists is what you did in that first analysis. And guess what? They watched it and they responded <laughs> to you and yeah. they wanted to answer your questions. And I think that's awesome. Good show, mate. I know. I was totally. I mean, that took me. I was flabbergasted when that happened. Uh, honestly, I, I, I. First of all, I was like, "Is this a joke? Is this, <laughs> is this real? Are they contacting me?" And, I, and I, the first thought you have is, "Oh my God, what have I done? Are they going to tell me? You know, you've got to take that video down. How dare you say these things?" But it, it was quite the opposite. They were like, "Yeah, no, we, we really appreciate what you did. It was really good. So we want to kind of answer your questions." I'm like, "Let's let's do it. Let's go." So yeah, it was it was an amazing opportunity and. You know, he, he was really honest in, in in what he talked about, which I thought kind of, you know, you you get to know someone, uh, you know, as best as you can by talking them uh, on the on through Skype, and you know, he seemed really genuine, and and the answers he gave, I was kind of like, yeah, that makes makes sense to me. I mean, I still want the 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 data that they keep. I I want that for me, but obviously, I understand why some of it is difficult for them to to share with us, but you know. Time will tell, shall we say, and I, and I think it's a big step forward. Although I, I can see ways that the mainstream will dismiss it without doubt, but you know, as they continue that work, I think it, it builds a good solid foundation to prove that we we do need to look at things differently. You can't just make assumptions and keep going with those assumptions. The problem is a lot of it is driven by the fact that that you know we our society is run by by large corporates. And therefore, there has to be funding involved. And when there's funding involved, there is a direction that they set. They steer that direction. And you know, you once you're so embedded with an idea, it is very difficult to change direction. And you know, that's I think unfortunately where we are in society. And that means that these sorts of ideas get less and less attention. And that means that 
you know. Well, we lost Gareth, so I'm going to quickly try to call him back up here while we're still recording. Shouldn't be a problem. Wouldn't it? There'd be nothing to sit there and go, yeah, what? why is that the way that it is? And, and look at that thing in the sky. Where did that come from? I think part of it is that we will never know everything because it would just, we'd die. I think we'd just be so bored. You'd know everything. There'd be no point. Well, we have there some cutting, point, cutting right? edge well, the point science. Is to ask. If you want to learn more about cutting edge science, go see Gareth's uh, YouTube site here. See the pattern. Bone up on your electric university or your electric universe, which basically you are. See the pattern is the electric universe university. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you on the show, Gareth. We want to have you back. Uh, do you have any parting words for our guests? Uh, well, everyone is welcome. You know, it doesn't matter whether you're mainstream or not mainstream. You know, it, the thing that we need to have is an open debate about our beliefs. And, you know, as long as people are open to that, that's what the channel is about. Finding our way through all of these questions and asking questions. So, yeah, come and join us. And thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Be safe. <laughs>